We've covered many shortwave oddities recently such as channel markers, number stations and signals that nobody can really explain. Another oddity on the shortwave bands that we do know more about is a jammer known as Firedrake. Now just a quick note, I don't like trawling Google for other people's pictures which is what I had to do for the last video on Woodpecker, so again enjoy some of my stock footage to go with this story. Some countries fear a free flow of information through their media outlets and often go to extraordinary lengths to ensure they maintain control over the distribution of news and information. While some governments build media firewalls or other barriers to stop outside information being received by their citizens, other groups are just as determined to allow their views to be heard behind these barriers. Information can be diluted or restricted by many different methods. Some information is controlled via a relatively light non-technical approach. Other heavy techniques use various technologies to jam or completely stop the flow of information considered subversive. One such method directed at radio outlets is jamming. Whilst international regulations prohibit jamming, it still goes on and Fire Drake is one of the most prolific. Radio jamming in China is a common form of censorship that involves deliberate attempts by the state or communist party organisations to interfere with radio broadcasts. In the majority of cases, the targets of these radio jammers are foreign broadcasters. In simple terms, powerful transmitters send strong signals on the same frequencies as the target station in an attempt to block it out. The Chinese government often disrupts shortwave radio communications by broadcasting music, drumming or other noises. Fire Drake, sometimes referred to as the Fire Dragon, is a jamming signal that seeks to jam specific radio stations in Asia from being received by listeners. Since broadcasting began in 1996, the Chinese authorities have constantly jammed Radio Free Asia broadcasts and in 2002, the Broadcasting Board of Governors reported that quote, virtually all of VOA and RFA's shortwave radio transmissions directed to China are jammed, including their Mandarin, Cantonese, Tibetan and Uyghur language services. In 2008, the Oslo-based Voice of Tibet reported that jamming of its radio communications had intensified during the 2008 Tibetan unrest, as authorities increased the number of disrupted signals it employed to block out transmissions. Other targets of jamming by Firedrake include the BBC World Service, Radio Taiwan International and the Falun Gong-affiliated Sound of Hope radio network. The Falun Gong shortwave radio station The Sound of Hope is the main method of reaching their supporters in mainland China. Sound of Hope programs allege persecution and torture by the People's Republic of China and the Chinese go to incredible efforts to ensure the station is basically impossible to listen to by jamming it. The Fire Drake signal is so strong that it usually completely obliterates the Falun Gong broadcasts, making them unintelligible. Shortwave radio enthusiasts and ham radio operators alike have been observing China's Fire Drake jammer with interest, trying to piece together the jigsaw. Fire Drake programming, if you can call it that, is fed to the transmitter using ChinaSat 6B within the China National Radio satellite feed circuits. Many of these CNR feeds are in stereo, however one channel that is solely mono is CNR8, the voice of the Mongolian broadcast, which features programs in Kazakh, Korean, Mongolian, Tibetan and Uyghur languages. The CNR8 audio feed to the Chinese transmitter sites can be found on the left audio channel of a feed circuit. On the right audio channel of this feed is the audio for the Fire Drake transmitters. Whilst the music played on the jammer is referred to as Fire Drake, it actually consists of a series of 12 Chinese folk songs, although only 6 of the songs have been identified. It's believed that the primary Fire Drake transmitter location is on Hainan Island, off the coast of southern China, but there's also speculation that there may be other transmitter sites in use elsewhere. Where these are exactly isn't known. Fire Drake goes off the air at the top of each hour and stays off for up to 25 minutes. 
It's believed that this off time is likely what is known as look through, a window to listen and make sure the signal that Fire Drake intends to jam is still on that frequency before it starts or restarts jamming. Fire Drake changes its frequency to match the stations it's jamming, so it often shifts frequency from hour to hour. It can have as many as 10 or so frequencies active at one time, but this is rare and is usually limited to one or two. After some look through time, Fire Drake comes back up on one frequency at a time, from low to high frequency, but it does often bring up the lowest frequency last. This off time has been noticed by Fire Drake's targets, so they use it to their advantage. They often put their most important material in the first 15 minutes of transmission, trying to get it out to the target audience before Fire Drake starts. A few stations also transmit for up to 15 minutes only, and then shift frequency in an attempt to avoid the jammer. Fire Drake is on the air daily, and is probably easiest to hear in the West using online SDRs. Have you heard it? Let me know.